Good evening. You're watching the News at Six with me, Ishan Russell. The News at Six is all about the day's biggest developing stories, and one of the biggest stories that happened today was, of course, Prime Minister Narendra Modi defending the farmers, uh, the land acquisition bill, saying it's not anti-farmer in any way in the Lok Sabha. We'll be talking about that and a whole host of other stories over the next half hour. But first, the headlines we're tracking right now. Prime Minister Narendra Modi takes on opposition for opposing his government's initiatives, reiterate that growth and development will remain priorities. The economic survey forecasts growth rate of over 8% for 2015-16, emphasizes scope of big bank reforms. All set for Finance Minister Arun Jaitley's full first pledge budget on Saturday. Growth and fiscal consolidation expected to be his key focus areas. And the PDP BJP coalition government to share 25 member cabinet. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend swearing in ceremony of Mufti Mohammad Said in Jammu on Sunday. Well, uh, this evening our top story is uh, that uh, generally known as the statement of the government's intent for the economy, the India government's economic survey for 2014-15 predicts that India will soon become the world's fastest growing economy with a growth rate of more than 8%. It also noted that India had hit an economic sweet spot and had room for big ticket reforms. Taking the current government's massive political mandate as an endorsement for the reform path, the economic survey says India has a historic opportunity to aim for a double-digit growth rate. While assuming that private investment will be the primary driver of growth in the long run, it says the government needs public investment in the short run. According to the survey, the government will adhere to a fiscal deficit target of 4.1% of the GDP in 2014-2015. It says retail inflation for 2015 could be between 5 and 5.5%. Farm output, however, is likely to lag behind at 4%, while estimating the current account deficit to fall to 1% of the GDP in the next fiscal. Government has clearly indicated that the government is still uh, on the course to the economic reforms despite political roadblocks in parliament. The survey highlights that tax estimates of the government are overestimated and there's need to increase revenue generation. This may dampen the expectations of corporate India that Arun Jaitley will announce a number of tax swaps in his budget on Saturday. They will have to be correcting the uh, tax structure that is in place. They will have to be play. They will have to be creating a level playing field. Many of the inverted duty structure promotes more imported goods rather than the domestic goods will be a great signal not only to the Indian investor but to the global investor that India or the new government means business. The opposition parties slammed the government for over-enthusiasm. Now your exports are more than 11 percent. Your industrial growth and your manufacturing growth are negative. आपका एग्रीकल्चरल ग्रोथ घटा है पहली बार आजादी के बाद जितना जमीन आपके अंदर खेती होती थी वो खेती का जमीन घटा है अब ग्रोथ कहां से हो रही भाई ये आंकड़ों की मतलब मैनिपुलेशन के अलावा और कोई मतलब इसके लिए एक्सप्लेनेशन नहीं है प्रेडिक्टेड द ग्रोथ ऑफ 8 8.1% बट दिस इज अकॉर्डिंग टू न्यू क्राइटेरिया व्हिच इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल वर्ल्ड वाइड if you go by the old criteria, then the growth will be around 6. So I think the actual figure of the growth is 6% and uh, with new criteria which the government has adopted, they can claim it to be 8%. The survey says the current macroeconomic scenario in India is more favorable than other countries. Much of the improvement is a consequence of the sharp decline in global crude oil prices. The fall in oil prices, a normal monsoon and reduction of inflationary expectations are likely to create space for RBI to ease its monetary policy. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajasabha TV.
Now, one of the most important policy direction or guidance that people will be looking for in this year's budget is the government's roadmap on a proposed goods and services tax. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has already tabled a modified bill in the Lok Sabha last December following an agreement with the states. He is expected to tweak some tax rates in preparation to implement the GST from 2016 in his first full budget that will be presented at the end of this month. A reform that's been in the works for over 10 years. The finance minister wants to implement the goods and service tax regime from April 2016. Industry bodies and tax experts are waiting to see if the union budget will finally present a road map. What would be more in, most important in the budget according to me? The most important thing is he should announce a road map which he has been over a period of time saying we will probably do it in this much time frame and this much time frame. I think he needs to put a seal on it. When it comes to taxes on sales and goods, India has a complex duty structure, both at the centre and state levels. It starts with a basic excise duty of 12% on production, a service tax at a similar rate. Add to it value-added tax that state governments charge on sales at varying rates of 4 to 20 percent. In addition, the centre also levies a 1 percent sales tax on interstate sales of goods. The rates of excess duty and service tax can be tweaked in a manner and ultimately when the common rate is fixed by the GST, this is in line with that particular thing. Despite the setback in the Delhi Assembly elections, Finance Minister Jaitley is determined to push through economic reforms like the GST. Any announcement in his budget speech could clear the government's stand on the issue. Once implemented, the GST will subsume most of the indirect taxes on domestic production, sale of goods and also providing services in India. Implementation of GST alone could boost GDP growth by 1% and provide revenues to both the centre and states. Krishna Nantrapati, Raj Sabha TV. Well, now there are also questions about what happens to the old schemes. The Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act is one of those uh, which uh, is being questioned uh, by many experts whether this will uh, witness budget cuts or not. A uh, lot for the finance minister to deal with as far as the social sector is concerned. At a time when the NDA government says it wants to focus on rural development, there's growing concern for one of the flagship schemes of the previous UPA government. To recap, this is what the finance minister said about it in his interim budget last year. The government is committed to provide wage and self-employment opportunities in rural areas. However, wage employment would be provided under the Manrega through works that are more productive, asset creating, substantially linked to agriculture and allied activities. Despite Jaitley's promises on Manrega, nine months after the Modi government took charge, there's growing concern of an impending budget cut for the world's first of its kind scheme. One that benefited rural India, especially the women and marginalized sections. So certainly we are hoping that uh, the NREGA budget will go back to that 54,000 level, perhaps even more. Um, just to put this number in perspective, it sounds like a very big number, but 33,000 crores is just 0.3% of the GDP. Um, and this is one third of 1% of GDP, which is providing uh, employment to 25% of the rural population. So I think it's only fair that the budget for this program should increase. Moving up from around 11,000 crore rupees in 2006-07 to 40,000 crore rupees in 2009-10, the allocation for Manrega stabilized at around 33,000 crore rupees. Current allocations are 34,000 crore rupees. Actually, Manrega suffers from a design flaw. It concentrates on giving employment but does not monitor assets. We need to have labor-intensive employment-giving programs. Uh, for instance, we need to have programs which will improve drought, uh, 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 which will sort of improve productivity in agriculture through drought proofing by constructing new ponds or tanks or through afforestation. 
but all these assets must be measured. That is all not happening. The 2015-16 budget comes at a time when the scheme is already under review. Over 70% wages are delayed. Less than 3% households have completing the promised 100 days of work. I will get the work and I will also get the wages. So what, what these low allocations are doing is both that work is not really uh, being offered uh, on demand as uh, in the way that uh, the law requires, but also that the work that uh, people manage to do if they don't get paid for months, then uh, the whole purpose of Narega gets uh, vitiated. Launched in 2006, the UPA government scheme is witnessing uncertain times. The new government is being accused of squeezing its funds in the upcoming budget. But irrespective of budget allocations, the scheme does drive demand and legally guarantees a registered household to get 100 days of work. Experts say any cut in this will mean the government is neglecting its legal responsibility besides putting the livelihood security of millions at risk. Anshu J. Singh, Rajya Sabha TV. Another two-day discussion on the motion of thanks on uh, President Pranam Mukherjee's uh, budget speech ended uh, in the Lok Sabha with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's statement. In his hour-long speech, the Prime Minister criticized the opposition for opposing major initiatives of the BJP government like the Land Bill. He said growth and development will always remain his top priority. आपने किया हुआ हम उसको नकारते नहीं है आपने जो कोशिश की है उसको हम कुछ रह गए तो जोड़ना चाहते हैं इसलिए हम आपका साथ सहकार चाहते हैं कृपा करके इसको राजनीति के तराजू से मत तोड़िए और मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाऊं इसमें अभी भी आपको लगता है कि किसानों के खिलाफ एक भी चीज है मैं उसमें बदलाव करने के लिए तैयार हमारे देश में राजनीतिक कारणों से संप्रदाय का जहर घोलता चला जा रहा है और आज से नहीं चला जा रहा है लंबे अरसे से चला जा रहा है जिसने देश को तबाह करके रखा हुआ है भारत को प्रेम करने वाले हर व्यक्ति के लिए यह बात साफ है यह दाइश विविधताओं से भरा हुआ है विविधता में एक था यही हमारे देश की पहचान है यह हमारी ताकत है Now, the union budget to be presented on Saturday will be a keenly watched affair, from expectations of tax breaks for the common man to measures of bringing down inflation. All eyes will be on Arun Jaitley. So let's take a look at the expectations from this year's budget. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has often said that he is not in favour of burdening the salaried and middle class with more taxes. Saturday's budget will be looked upon with a lot of hope of tax relief. Jaitley's first budget led to tax savings of about 40,000 rupees for those in the highest tax bracket last year. On the inflation front, the common man hopes there will be some measures to counter it. Plunging oil prices recently have only fueled this hope. As a tax practitioner, I hope that the first thing is that the GST will be applicable to the first thing. The number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the tourism sector, the number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the trading sector. The number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the trading sector. The number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the trading sector. The number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the trading sector. The number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the trading sector. The number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the trading sector. The number two, our manufacturing sector, the service sector, the trading sector. The number two, the budget is also expected to give a big push to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Make in India campaign with incentives for several sectors. A push to indigenous manufacturing will boost jobs and help rejuvenate an underperforming economy. It will be a very important budget uh, for India and effectively last uh, five, six years uh, we, had, uh, we didn't have uh, the kind of growth that is required by India. Uh, we need to create huge number of jobs every year and uh, that means that we need to have a budget which is basically pro-industry, um, pro-job creation. What is good for India is good for BSE. Jaitley has promised to implement the nationwide goods and services tax from the 1st of April 2016. A bill was introduced in Parliament in December to rationalize state and central indirect taxes into a harmonized sales tax.
However, its passage will depend on whether the finance minister keeps his promise to compensate states adequately. Investors will also keenly watch the budget speech to see if it finds a way to boost capital spending while exercising fiscal restraint. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now on to Jammu and Kashmir where finally there is going to be a government in place after days of negotiations and last minute hiccups. The deal has been sealed between the PDP and the BJP. Mufti Mohammad Said will be sworn in as Chief Minister on Sunday. The much delayed meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and PDP patron Mufti Mohammad Said took place at the Prime Minister's residence today, putting an end to speculations about a last minute hitch in the alliance. Said will now be sworn in as the Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir for a second time on Sunday, 1st of March. He will be heading a 25 member cabinet which will have 12 BJP MLAs, including the Deputy Chief Minister. वो बुलुक जैसे कहते हैं कुछ बात है कि हस्ती मिटती नहीं हमारी आई थिंक उनको भी पूरा एहसास है कि चलाना है वे हैव फाउंड कॉमन ग्राउंड ये तो करना पड़ता है ना हिलना पड़ता है वन हैज टू बी फ्लेक्सिबल the BJP, which will be a part of a coalition government for the first time in Jammu and Kashmir, hailed it as a historic agreement. उस सहमति बनाते समय राज्य का हित और राष्ट्र का हित को किसी प्रकार का की समस्या ना आए उसका भी ध्यान रखकर देश हित में राज्य हित में जनता के हित में एक अच्छा निर्णय लेकर आगे बढ़ने का प्रयास हमने किया है the opposition parties termed it a politically motivated alliance, calling it a defiance of the people's verdict. ग्राउंड में ये दोनों जमातें जो हैं अलग-अलग इनका एजेंडा रहा है, लेकिन अब कामन मिनिमम प्रोग्राम है, उसको सारा पब्लिक सारी पब्लिक देखेगी कामन प्रोग्राम क्या बनाया है इन्होंने और उससे लोगों की जरूरतें किस हद तक पूरी हो रही हैं। They are ideologically poles apart, but Mufti Muhammad Said can go to any extent. For, for the sake of power. The two parties, said to be ideologically opposites, are expected to govern the state on the basis of a common minimum program, the framework for which was created by PDP's Hasib Drabu and BJP's Ram Madhav after negotiations that lasted two months. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Some sports now in India will try to complete a hat-trick of victories when they take on Minnow's United Arab Emirates in their third group league match in Perth on Saturday. India start as favourites having won the opening matches against Pakistan and South Africa. UAE are without a win so far. Pacer Mohammad Shami will miss the match due to a knee injury. India will also be without the services of coach Duncan Fletcher who left for South Africa for the funeral of his father-in-law. Team director Ravi Shastri will guide the team in his absence. And one of the biggest victories at the World Cup, South Africa today defeated West Indies by 257 runs in their Pool B game at the Sydney Cricket Ground. After winning the toss and batting first, South Africa piled up a huge total of 408 runs, losing just five wickets. This is the second highest World Cup total of all time. South African captain A.B. de Villiers smashed the second fastest World Cup century of 52 balls and finished on 162 not out. In reply, the West Indies lost their wickets in quick succession and were bowled out for just 151. For South Africa, spinner Imran Tahir took five wickets, while Pacer Moni Mokul and Kyle Abbott picked up two wickets each. Well, that's all from us. Goodbye.